the Byzantines and Crusaders in one army. That's probably something we're never going to see again. Hello there everyone, this is Lemonade. This is a scenario review. I am reviewing Kaminos, the Byzantine Restoration by Philadelphia. He's an experienced map maker. He's made several campaigns for Forgotten Empires and Definitive Edition. And let's get right into it. From the notes of Anna Kamin, daughter and sister of emperors. My father, Alexos Kaminos, must have known he was a dead man. He had been sent by the emperor to kill the usurper Melisinos. Alexos would not have hesitated to go to battle, but the rebel was married to Alexos' own sister. Rather than killing a member of his family, he chose to disobey the emperor. Now he was summoned to the imperial court. Surely Alexos was facing his own death. But also surely there were many in the city who would support him. Alexos had heard the whispers in the market in the senate hall. The emperor was a weak and old man who could only watch the empire be consumed by war and rebellion. He clung to power only through the fear brought by his Phrangian guard. Surely plots were forming to depose him. As he marched to meet the emperor, Alexos knew that it was time for decisive action. We began outside the gates to Constantinople being instructed to go meet with the Emperor the Hagia Sophia to speak about Alexios' refusal to defeat the usurper who is married to Alexios' sister. We pass by a monk traveling into Constantinople who wishes that the true Romans walked these streets instead of the foreigners and filthy Celts, he says. We meet with Emperor Nikiforos outside the Hagia Sophia with his friend Jengar nearby him. The meeting basically goes like this. He's upset that we did not attack the usurper, but he says we respect blood more than anything else, so bloodline, lineage, all that. So he is now telling us to make an army and wants us to meet with a eunuch outside the city gates, which we will be doing. On the way out to the camp, we run into Empress Maria, who tells us of a plot to depose the emperor. She is on board with the idea and tells us to go meet with the eunuch outside. Meeting with the eunuch at the tents, he tells Alexios that he has paid off the political allies that we need and we must gather some men to get into the city of Constantinople and kill his Phrangian guard so that we may take over the Byzantine Empire. We have ten minutes to do this. Found a bunch of crossbowmen hiding in a windmill. In the countryside, a rebel leader pledges his forces to our cause, saying that he fought with our father to help our uncle take the throne. His ragtag force will be useful in fighting the Frangians. A man has offered to let us use his boat, so we'll be using that to get into the city of Constantinople to attack the Frangian guard. Eunuch and company have arrived in the port of Constantinople. A city guard saw us sneak by and caused an alarm. The Frangian guard starts throwing axes like a machine gun, and the other comes into battle as well. They're both quickly killed by just swarming them with soldiers. Emperor Nikiforos calls for his guard, but it's not enough. And once they're dead, his wife tells him to get out. He is told to leave. He is sad that he was betrayed by his own wife and his generals, but it's a Byzantine, Byzantine world. The last few Byzantine emperors have had a getting kicked off the throne problem, and we're going to need to change that. This scenario does have a few nuances, like the legitimacy system, which goes down if you lose units or buildings, but goes up when you complete quests from the eunuch especially, or just complete objectives that you need to win the game. So the first quest arrives from the unit. You can train Phrangian Guard at the Hagia Sophia, which they are very strong berserks, but they'll also only call gold, so they're very expensive to use. But they're very good, so they'll do a lot of damage. There is also villagers in this, but you had to recruit them from the market instead of a town center. They can only build defenses, and they can't build anything else. The first quest from the Stratagos, that is to kick out the Normans, led by Robert Giscar, who is the Teal Franks. And they were getting a little bit too touchy with my land in the west, in Derechium. So they just gotta go. They can't stick around. The Bulgarians are hiding in the Balkan Mountains, so they gotta get out of the way. Otherwise, they're just gonna keep attacking any of the Byzantine soldiers that go by. And they need to be cleared out. One more important thing to note. You only get gold from the city taxes every year, and you gotta trade everything else at the market. The Norman camp is destroyed, even if the Bulgarians try to save it by distracting my cab archers. 
By completing the Stratijos objective, the Legionnaires and the Cataphracts decide to fight harder. Legionnaires are recruited from barracks in this, completely replacing champions in that whole militia line. The Bulgarians saw they were safe hiding in the mountains. They were not. After taking out a few cab archers that seemed to inhabit entire Europe, we have found the wonderful landmark of the barricade on the river Danube that blocks the way from barbarians attacking us. There has been a tragedy in the Byzantine Empire. An emperor has gone drunk. That will be the first of many scandals, I presume. These are lower legitimacy, which if it gets below 50, there will be a rebellion. The Patriarch has a mission for our drunk emperor. We must take Tripoli, which is owned by the Fatimids, who are the Yellow Saracens, and have too many Mamluks for me to fight, frankly. Just liberating a random city in the Balkans. That was Thessalonica. So if you kill all the enemies in a Gaia town, you'll capture it and get the taxes from it. The 20th Rangian Guard recruitment quest is over with. Despite what the eunuch says about how they smell, they are still very effective soldiers, and I'm pretty sure if they smelled, the enemies would be even more worried about them in the first place. The Normans may have made a slight tactical error. The first encounter with the Seljuk Turks is three galleys trying to shoot a wall. The reclamation of Greece has been slow and steady, as we now push out of Thessalonica, which has some cavalry behind it. Oh, another scandal just happened, and the strategy just gives us some advice not to go fight the guys focusing on cavalry out in the open. So there is another way to gain legitimacy. Go to the amphitheater, bet on a chariot team. If your team wins, you get extra legitimacy. If your team loses, you still get some, but not as much as you would if the team had won, which is very useful, but it costs gold. Nicky Foros Diogenes has claimed he is the Byzantine Emperor and has taken control of Cyprus and Crete. The hit list for Alexios is just going to grow larger as time goes on, it seems. The Byzantine army has made it into the Peloponnese to fight even more rebels, who hopefully just won't pose much of a threat and give up without a fight. While I was killing off some enemies of Rome in this Greek town, some more news arrived that there is another enemy to fight now in Anatolia, known as Tostius in the city of Smyrna. He wants to invade the Byzantine Empire at some point. Maestros is reclaimed, the eunuch complains about something, and for the most part, the mainland of Greece and the Balkans is secured under Byzantine rule. In chariot racing news, the emperor bets on the wrong team, but people are too happy to notice anyway, so legitimacy would just go up regardless. A scandal is taking place in Constantinople. A eunuch cannot stop punching people. A mission from the Patriarch. Send three monks to the monastery in Rome to reconcile the faiths in the East and the West. The landing party in Anatolia is met with Seljuk Turks and enemies of Rome, who cannot stop using cavalry. The whole reason for this landing was to retake control of a camp, the strategist told us about and it was given to me as a mission. The camp is reclaimed but it is under attack by the Seljuk Turks who is green and they are assaulting watchtowers with groups of cav archers and step lancers. Aging up using a wonder? That's new. With that quest complete, legionnaires can now be recruited from barracks even quicker so that's going to help spam our enemies with tons and tons of legionnaires in the future burning the green tents. They are on fire. They will make a good pyre. That is a lot of mangonels. The missing army has been found. It turns out the Turks have impaled them all and they're now just on stakes. Stop attacking my buildings! <laughs> the Varangian Guard arrived to Italy to begin their vacation. Bari is liberated but it is offset by the ominous warning of the arrival of the Pechenegs, who will soon cross the Danube and attack the Byzantine Empire. Strategists suggest that we fortify the river to make the crossing more difficult for the Pecheneg hordes who will come across in great number. I don't see them getting past these palisade walls. The Pharangian vacation of 1091 is complete as Robert Giscard, leader of the Normans in Italy, is killed, unfortunately off-screen 
but his camp and base is burning to the ground. The Petrusenegg Horde arrives across the Danube, and here they are going across the ridge, and they just cross over. I blame the villager. He was tired when he was making that. On the bright side of my failure to make walls, the Normans in Italy are defeated, leaving only the Seljuk Turks to be defeated as well for the victory to be had. The pinnacle of medieval warfare. Just using the second best siege unit in the game to shoot at some cavalry. Pitchnecks have been driven back only at the cost of many Romans and walls. Three monks arrived to the monastery in Rome, completing the mission given to us by the Patriarch. This will give us a few transport ships or crusaders. There is two varieties of crusaders. The French have cavaliers and Genies crossbowmen, while the Germans have Teutonic Knights and cavaliers. Crete is liberated faster than you can say invasion. Stop making mega nails! Cyprus is liberated after a little bit of resistance. Mickey Foro Styogenes is defeated. While they were taking a nice healthy hike into the mountains, my soldiers ran across a bunch of remaining Bulgarians. I think this is the last of them now. And they are... that's, that's it. They're defeated. And that will let the soldiers fight harder for a short amount of time. Tarshus and his horse archer army is crushed, as well as the mangonels that they keep building in their base. After that little Pechneg episode, it's probably best we get a giant wall. Smyrna is back in control, giving us even more income for the Byzantine Empire. Preparation for the Fetimid of Phibius and Salt begins. Their navy has to be cleared out first. Antioch is returned to the Imperial Fold, which will of course provide more taxes for the war effort. What goes up must come down, except for the glory of the Roman Empire. The eunuch sends word of a rebellion being planted near Constantinople. The Fetimid base of Tripoli is set asunder as Rangian Guard and Crusaders arrive upon their shores. An army appears north of Constantinople claiming to be led by a long deposed emperor who seeks to claim the Byzantine throne once more. Another catastrophe in the Byzantine Empire, there is a scandal, which is fake of course, but there are bigger problems to worry about. By destroying the Fetimid base, we have cleared away to Jerusalem for pilgrims, and we got, you guessed it, more crusaders. Grab the relic on roads. Gathering three relics has completed another mission for the Patriarch, bringing more crusaders, of course. There's just a crusader extravaganza going on. A second chariot race, but this time, Alexos Kamenos bets on the right team, and they win. So that's more legitimacy for us. Byzantines and Crusaders in one army? That's probably something we're never going to see again. The Seljuk Turks have been defeated, their base is destroyed, Manzikert has been avenged. The game's going to switch into free play mode, but I'm going to do a couple more things before the video ends. Tender is taken care of, and that's the last threat to the Kamenos restoration. Edessa will be the cherry on top of everything, as it was the final city left to be conquered. Very entertaining scenario as the Byzantines. This was the Kamenos Restoration by Philadelphia. If you like the content, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment, even. I'll see you later. Bye.